So today we're talking about the risk inventory process, which is a really important process in a bank. And to understand what the risk inventory process is, I will give you a little overview of what we've covered so far. So, so far we've said that risk management is all about balancing risk and balancing equity. And we have said that risk can be divided into different risk types, like, for example, credit risk, market risk, operational risk, and so on. And every bank needs to understand which risk types are relevant for their banking portfolio or their business model. And this is where the risk inventory process comes in and what we're going to focus on today. The risk inventory focus, uh, process tells you which risk types are relevant for your certain portfolio. And it's usually a three-step process. In the first process, in the first step, we will start to define the risk universe. The risk universe is a long list of risk types. And this is brainstorming, right? Banks typically have about 120 risk types in their risk universe. And this can be the typical risk types like credit risk or market risk, but it can also be very, very out of the box risk types like systemic risk and systemic risk is just the risk that the system in which the bank operates breaks down. And for instance, if the government of the USA breaks down, this might be a risk factor, a risk type for a bank operating in the USA. Another risk type in the risk universe might be real estate risk, right? And real estate risk is just the risk of real estate losing value. Right? And this might be relevant for a bank which operates within the real estate sector. And in the second step, we're going to understand all relevant risks. And this is a very easy step. What we're doing in the second step is we look at all the risk factors in the risk universe, which we've gathered from brainstorming, which we've gathered from other sources on the internet, which we've gathered from um, the banking regulator, and we look at which are really relevant, right? For instance, maybe I can cross off real estate risk because I'm a bank and I don't operate within the real estate sector. And I will shortlist all of those factors into a list of relevant risk factors, right? And this list is typically shorter. And in the third step, I try to understand whether those relevant risks are material. And material just means that they have a significant impact on my, on my revenue or my asset values. Right? It could be that I have a risk which is relevant to me. Maybe I have real estate risks because I own real estate, but I only own, own so little real estate that this is not really material, right? Let's say, for instance, I only own one building, it's worth a million dollars, but my portfolio is about $10 billion, so this is not really a material risk. And what I try to do there, or what the process is, I try to pinpoint numbers for every relevant risk, right? For instance, I say, well, the potential loss stemming from real estate might be 1 million euros. And I set thresholds, or I set specific numbers that, that tell me, all right, if my risk is above a threshold X, my risk is relevant. And if it's not above a threshold X, my risk is not relevant. And the typical threshold that banks set is depending on their risk-weighted assets. Right? If you don't know what risk-weighted asset is, I will link a video um, explaining the risk-weighted assets. And what banks typically, typically do is they set their threshold at 2% of their risk-weighted assets. Right? In other words, if, if my bank's risk-weighted assets are 100 million euros, the 2% are 2 million euros. And in our case, the potential downfall from real estate is 1 million euros. My real estate, my, my threshold is at 2 million euros. So I would say that this risk is non-material. And this means in the end of the risk inventory process, I get a short list of material risk types. Right? And it is typically shorter than the relevant risk types. And all of those material risk types need to be monitored within a bank. And there are typically people assigned to the individual material risk types. So there might be people to, for credit risk, there might be people for market risk, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this process is typically done once a year in a bank. So every, every year a bank looks at the risk universe and establishes the material risk factors relevant for this bank. And typically for most banks, you land at 10 to 12 material risk types, maybe to, to, to have a number. 